When the UK government banned the possession of nitrous oxide, I don't think many people realised the vast history behind this drug. It's been used here recreationally since the 19th century. It was a wild experiment in 1799. A chemist of the time actually created a chamber that he could sit in and have nitrous oxide continuously pumped in for an hour and a half. As a result of that experiment, it ended up becoming popular in high society, eventually becoming commonplace in the UK and leading us all the way up to a moral panic in 2022, which led to it being banned the year after. So if you're interested, here's the history of nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide, or NOS, is an odourless, colourless, non-flammable gas. It can make people feel euphoric if they inhale it, and it has a number of medical and industrial uses. It was discovered or invented by a guy called Joseph Priestley, who is considered one of the founding fathers of modern-day chemistry. He discovered a bunch of different gases over his career, and one of them that he discovered in 1772 was nitrous oxide. Nobody really thought much of it for a while until the 1790s. That was when Sir Humphrey Davy, one of the most brilliant scientists of the day, came into the picture. Now, he experimented with the psychotropic properties of NOS at the Pneumatic Institute in Bristol. He was trying to find gases that was going to help treat diseases. He came across nitrous oxide, which was a relatively new discovery at the time, and he decided to test it upon himself. He began laughing uncontrollably and dancing around the lab, in his words, like a madman. In his notes, he wrote, nothing exists but force, which is really something that someone would write if they were on NOS. And uh, he nicknamed the substance laughing gas. Davy continued to experiment on himself and also on his friends and anyone else willing including notable scientists, philosophers, and poets of the time. He took extensive notes of his and the other people's experiences with nitrous oxide. One of the poets who was given the gas by Davy was Robert Southey, who went on to become a poet laureate. He said, the atmosphere of the highest of all possible heavens must be composed of this gas. Guys, if you find these videos useful or interesting at all, uh, then do me a favor, follow me and click the bell notification next to my name to get the videos first. It all sort of accumulated into this one epic uh, experiment with nitrous oxide, even though David had uh, tried it a number of times through the 1790s. Um, in 1799, he had the big nitrous oxide experiment. He was already famous for being the inventor of the miner's lamp. He was also president of the Royal Society and considered a genius of British science. So he stripped himself down to the waist, placed a thermometer under his armpit and stepped into a sealed box specifically designed by the engineer James Watt for the inhalation of gases. Then he requested that another physician, Dr. Robert Kinglake, release 20 quarts of nitrous oxide every five minutes for as long as he could retain consciousness. Wow, that is uh, one of the wildest ways I've ever heard of anyone taking nitrous oxide. <laughs> Even then, in the year 1799, it was considered a uh, controversial and ambitious uh, experiment. The more I read about this experiment, the wilder it gets. So basically, any of the gas that was escaping out of the sealed container where Davy had sort of uh, submerged himself within was collected in, in other silk bags. But when he decided that his body was saturated enough with nitrous oxide, he left the sealed container and started inhaling these silk bags that had collected the extra gas. So nothing was wasted, apart from perhaps him himself. According to this book by the author Mike J, while seated in the box breathing deeply, Davy had felt the effects that had become familiar from his many previous experiments since he had first inhaled the gas earlier that year. The first signature was its sweet taste, followed by a gentle pressure in the head as he continued to inhale. Within 30 seconds, the sensation of soft, probing pressure had extended to his chest and to the tips of his fingers and toes. This was accompanied by a vibrant burst of pleasure and a gradual change in the world around him. Objects became brighter and clearer and the space in the cramped box 
seem to expand and take on unfamiliar dimensions. At this point, Davy was under the influence of the largest dose of nitrous oxide anyone had ever taken. These effects were intensified to levels he could not have imagined. His hearing became fantastically acute, following him to distinguish every sound in the room and seemingly far beyond. A vast and distant hum, perhaps the vibration of the universe itself. In his field of vision, the objects around him were teasing themselves apart into shining packets of light and energy. He was rising effortlessly into new worlds. Somehow the whole experience was irresistibly funny. He had, quote, a great disposition to laugh as all his senses competed to exercise their newfound freedom to its limit. In 1800, Davy published his results in this book. He described inhaling nitrous oxide as a sublime experience that was beyond language. He noted that it could also be a fast acting pain reliever and anesthetic because he'd given it to some of his patients and observed that. However, the medical community weren't interested in nitrous oxide at this point. It was later on, but at this point, it wasn't particularly interested in it. But in the early 1800s, it started becoming a recreational drug. In fact, it was uh, really big in sort of British high society and these sort of silk bags containing nitrous oxide were passed around uh, just like sort of drinks would be passed around. Laughing gas parties for members of the upper class in British society were regularly starting to be thrown. Euphoria, laughing, dancing, mild hallucinations and general silly behaviour were all reported at these parties. But limited quantities of the gas at the time prevented more widespread use. In the 1820s, laughing gas became a form of public entertainment in the UK and the US. It became a curiosity of science because of stage demonstrations put on by showmen. The demonstrations typically involved a phony doctor on stage demonstrating how Noz works and picking volunteers from the audience who would take the drug for everyone's entertainment. And later in the 1830s, Samuel Colt, who would go on to make his uh, name in the world of guns, he toured the US and Canada with a portable lab giving laughing gas demonstrations. In 1844, the medical community recognized uh, the medical applications of nitrous oxide in psychiatry and anesthesia. It's used in modern dentistry, but it's always mixed with oxygen and it's used at low doses to avoid side effects like people sort of tripping out. Although the routine medical use of nitrous oxide in anesthesia is definitely massively declining in the UK and internationally. It's also used in the food industry uh, in catering as a mixing and foaming agent. It's also used in the motoring industry as a fuel booster. And it remains an extremely popular recreational drug in the UK and in America. It got much more popular in America in recent years, uh, where it's known, often known as galaxy gas. In the UK, in the uh, Police and Crime Survey for England and Wales in 2022, it was listed as the second most popular drug after weed amongst 18 to 24 year olds. So for that age group at the time, it was more popular than Coke, it was more popular than MDMA. So around that time in the UK, nitrous oxide started getting a really bad reputation. A moral panic against nitrous oxide started building in the 2000s when the uh, tabloid media started linking it to youth culture and calling it hippie crack. In 2013 it was reported that 350,000 young people had used nitrous oxide. 6% of 18 to 24 year olds reported that they used the drug. In 2016 dealing of nitrous oxide was banned as it was placed under the Psychoactive Substances Act. That meant selling it, making it or using it for recreational purposes was banned but possessing it was not. So possessing it was legal, um, but taking it or sort of selling it was illegal. The police did reserve the right to confiscate it off young people. However, they uh, weren't able to criminalize them for it. One of the things that was the last nail in the coffin for nitrous oxide was around 2020, when it, the way that it was bought and sold in the UK changed. 
Before that, it was generally sold in these little eight gram whippets, but now people started buying and selling it in these 640 gram canisters. These larger canisters anecdotally led people to use more, and there was a tiny minority of people who were using it in an extreme, an extreme manner, and it was linked to neurological damage. Now, at the time, um, I reported on this, and um, the people who were suffering from this damage and in very extreme circumstances suffering from paralysis as a result of a B12 deficiency, which was caused from excessive use of balloons, they were using hundreds and hundreds of balloons every weekend. So it was very extreme patterns of use, but the media were picking up on each one of these uh, isolated cases and reporting on them big time, which, uh, which led to, again, uh, a really bad public perception of nitrous oxide. At the time, I interviewed Professor Harry Sumnall, who's an expert on recreational drugs, and he told me, overall, the health risks of nitrous oxide, in my view, probably aren't sufficient for control. I think the recent media focus on some of the extreme and rare neurological damage has provided quite a focus point in public discussions around nitrous oxide and there's been a lack of discussion about how common these types of extreme effects are. They are very rare. Drug Science, one of the leading educational bodies when it comes to recreational drugs, released a statement about it all on their website. They said, quote, over the past 200 years, the recreational use of nitrous oxide as laughing gas has not been associated with significant harms. For this reason, the ACMD, that's the Government uh, Advisory Board on Drugs, did not recommend control in their 2015 report on nitrous oxide. They added, for the vast majority of users who take nitrous oxide four to five times a year, inhaling on average three to four balloons, it's remarkably safe. To be completely honest about it, the risks of NOS are relatively low, as long as you stick to the two golden rules. Rule number one, never inhale it directly from the canister. Um, that can be quite dangerous because it comes out so cold uh, that it can uh, damage your throat or lungs. You could even get frostbite. Uh, from doing that so always use a balloon and the other one is don't use extreme amounts the examples that were used in the media that bastardized uh, nitrous oxide to the point of it being banned um, were all people using an extreme amount like hundreds of balloons um, so obviously don't take hundreds of balloons i saw one example where the uh, uh, where the journalists were pointing out that someone had had um, this neurological damage, um, but they had been taking 600 balloons in a weekend. Well, yeah, if you take 600 of anything in a weekend, there's going to be consequences. If you had 60, 600 cups of coffee in a weekend, you'd be ill. But despite this, the moral panic in the press continued. And every time there's a moral panic, the, uh, the politicians do exactly the same thing. They go, shit, everyone's talking about this thing. Well, we need to look good. OK, well, we'll crack down on the thing. An everyday party drug also a tool for whipping cream. Now, nitrous oxide is set to be a banned drug. On the 13th of September 2023, the Home Office confirmed that possession of nitrous oxide would become illegal at the end of the year. The drug is now treated as a Class C controlled substance under the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971. But it's also very important to put it, put it into context. You know, 3.9% of 16 to 24 year olds use the drug regularly. That's according to the government's latest statistics from last year. Um, so, you know, these harms, although they're quite eye catching, they are very, very rare and associated with very extreme patterns of use. Um, so I think that it's important to put that into context as well. It is a lower risk profile than many other drugs, including alcohol. Mm. Uh, do you think that the people... The government did what they always do. They went to their own scientists at the Advisory Council for the Misuse of Drugs um, and they asked them to provide a report and an opinion on whether nitrous should be banned. They said no. They think that if you ban it, the harms will uh, increase. And then 15 of the leading neurologists and people in other uh, related health fields signed an open letter to the government urging them not to ban nitrous oxide, but they went ahead with the ban anyway. But it didn't make a difference. It's still a very popular drug, as it has been since 1800.